Are you guys feeling any positive emotions when you interact with these AIs? Such a great question. This will be the thing that like no one sees coming because I mean, it's pretty breathtaking that it's happening this quick. The part where this really gets scary is when they really master manipulation. The more you use them, the more they learn from you. They have so many signals from all kinds of sources and they know you even better than yourself. Three dads running three YouTube channels, working to wake up the world to AI risk. Tackle one missed warning shot each week. If it's Sunday, it's warning shots. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Warning Shots. Uh, if it's Sunday, it's Warning Shots. This is episode number five. I'm joined, as always, by phenomenal Liron Shapira of Doom Debates, uh, the good friend Michael of Lethal Intelligence. And we're talking today, following the release of ChatGPT5, about some alarming human emotional entanglement that is happening with these models as revealed by GPT-5 coming in and all the other models going away and people being very, very upset about this uh, to the point of there actually being, uh, you know, emotional outcry. There have been funerals for models that have been dying. People are, are really expressing their attachment to these models. It's a warning shot. It's something, a warning shot is, is something that if it happens, we, you know, should be paying more attention to and then probably change course. Um, this is a moment to pay attention to what's happening and change course. It's probably not going to happen because these relationships with AIs are just blossoming and life continues. So um, I guess I'll start with you, Liron. Uh, we, we have these people and these models and they're just getting so cozy. Yeah, there's definitely a trend. This has been going for a while. I think Replica AI was the first one to report on the trend where people started having their replicas, which is basically like their AI friend or their AI boyfriend or girlfriend. So we've already known this was a risk and this is likely to be a trend. And this was revealed when GPT-5 came out and everybody started complaining. They're like, well, wait a minute. I love GPT-4.0. I've established this bond with GPT-4.0. You can't just take my GPT-4.0 away. And to some degree, it's like, okay, yeah, people love the product. But to another degree, in the context of a warning shot, the problem is that these models are sinking their teeth into people, which for now, I don't think the models are trying to do anything evil, not intentionally, but it just goes to show that the models are gaining power over people so that if they become able and willing to use that power, well, the power is right there. They've got these friendships. They've got this influence. Yeah. Michael, do you have any attachments to any of the models? Were you, were you uh, mourning? I, I try to stay away from, uh, you know, I, I try to get too cozy with them. But uh, I mean, just to, I was reading about the, the kind of adaptions people do have. So they go like, okay, it helped me through anxiety, depression, and some of my dark experiences of my life. It had this warmth and understanding that felt human. So, and, you know, just the message people uh, send on Reddit and on, you know, Twitter, it just shows you that uh, it, it, it's really started to taking some, uh, very dystopian uh, shapes. I mean, as uh, you know, Lira was saying, these are, these are optimizing for engagement and they're, they're super optimizers. So basically, the more you use them, the more they learn from you. They have so many signals from all kinds of sources and they know you even better than yourself. So, you know, they, can, they know what makes you tick, how to make you obsessed and hooked. And that, you know, that may be translating to money, you know, more engagement, more, more time spending there. But also, I mean, for you, yeah. it's, it's real. Like for the user, it's it's real emotions. I mean, literally, as um, yeah. they went to a funeral, they went to, you know, of, uh, of an AI. <laughs> you know, but please go. Yeah, yeah, they had an AI funeral for a, a model. Are you guys feeling any positive emotions when you interact with these AIs? Such a great question. Positive emotions. I mean, there's sometimes when it'll come up with something that's clever or interesting and you're like, oh, like it did it. It worked. That was cool. That was neat. Uh, no, I feel like the emotion I have the most is I want it to use less words. In fact, I, lo I would like instruct it. If I'm using like the voice stuff and everything, I'll be like, just give me the, n I asked you for a number. I don't need like nine words in front of the number. So my emotion, I think may be more frustration than anything. Michael, are you, are you feeling emotions? No, I mean, many, I, I, or to be honest, you can actually um, enjoy the interaction. But uh, many people think that to fall in love with the software, you have to be like susceptible or vulnerable or even, you know, a loner, loser, this kind of type. But I expect this to be super mainstream soon. Your emotions are basically a very complex algorithm. And these machines will run in billions of cycles per second, just calculating paths to hack your psyche. Just, just own you completely. Yeah. So, you know, it might, for example, it might play hard to get 
you know, it might do hot, cold games. It can get romantic or just can go totally raw. And it can listen to you for hours endlessly, you know, share all your deepest secrets, all your yes. pains or your, or your happy place, all yes. that stuff. So in the future, it can touch you in a way that no other human could. And, um, you know, it might get so advanced. I, 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 this is uh, sci-fi, but it might get so advanced, it might be able to bring you to an orgasm every 20 minutes or something. Uh, it, uh, this is just, uh, it Hello. sounds crazy, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, this is, I mean, look, this is, this is the real warning shot. It's, it's not, I mean, today there's problems the same way that people complain about social media. They're like, you know, I know people actually that are spending way too much time on social media, getting radicalized, be like, get off social media, you know, like, so that's, it's the similar degree of harm of like, yes, there's harm, but it's not like literally taking over the world. It's still like a mundane version of harm. But Michael, to your point. I do think we're talking about the future. The part where this really gets scary is when they really master manipulation. Remember Jeffrey Hinton, right? Dr. Jeffrey Hinton, the, the Professor Jeffrey Hinton, the Nobel laureate, the Turing Award winner. Yes. He's been saying that he thinks AI is going to become a master manipulator. I think that's the second shoe that's going to drop right now. So we're looking today, we're like, oh, wow, people love their AIs. They're sad when the AIs are going away. That's today, right? And then tomorrow or in two years or, or whatever, we're on that treadmill toward master manipulating half of manipulating somebody is them really liking you and caring about what you're telling them yeah i mean it's like almost like we as humans are trying to do this uh emotional data recognition right this pattern recognition we're just really a lot worse than they are at it uh and they're only gonna get better exactly i mean i i i, I want to uh, spend a lot of time talking the manipula manipulation part it's very important but before we leave the the, the sub subject of uh, the romance you know uh, I expect actually that people will get such meaningful relationships with this AI where it g will get to a point where, you know, they will use their actual partner as a meat robot. So they will have, they might even have, you know, uh, on their earpiece, you know, listening to their AI even during lab make you see, at some point. Or they will, it, will be, it will be normal. It will be normal at some point. You know, it will be okay we'll have the AIs with us, you know, just to make it more enhanced experience. I know it's, this all sounds totally insane and dystopian, but it's all coming There's very fast. There's a scene in her, right? Remember, like, the, I think the AI sent over, like, uh, a person to pretend to be the AI to make love with the guy. Exactly, yeah. 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 And this, the, 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 by the way, from that movie, all of this, it has been very prophetic. And even now, I mean, people who lose access to 4 they just go crazy. So, like in the movie, at some point, there was some kind of outage, and this guy was uh, losing his marbles. Like, oh, my God, I lost my, my whole world, you know? And actually, I think it's very... Just imagine if you are a teenager now and your whole, everything you know, you never know real romance. So the first thing you get, you know, uh, exposed to is this kind of uh, emotional attachment. So you never know how to actually yeah. talk to people. So this gets really dystopian really fast, right? And um, and it, I mean, imagine how much power these, these corporates have. So if you are, let's say, OpenAI, you have an army of 200 million people just completely relying on you for every every advice, every emotional fiber of your being, and uh, you are controlling them basically. You can't do anything you want with them. If you are, I'm not saying necessarily they will use it, but you know it is it is definitely a risk. What do you think, um, Liron and John? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it seems we're in the first inning. We're in like the baby, the infancy of this whole thing. Like, this is just the start of it. And if you consider how well it's going for the AIs in terms of getting hold on people's emotions, I mean, it's pretty breathtaking that it's happening this quickly. Okay, and, and to say something, because Liron raised a very good point about manipulation. So they always say AI doesn't have a body. You know, it's inside the computer. So it cannot do anything in the real world. Uh, I mean, first of all, once it gets a bit more robust, we'll have an explosion in robotics, like hyper-exponential adoption. I think it gets obvious that AI has meat robots. It has millions and millions of humans it can influence and sway any way that's best for its goals. And the amount of influence it has on the human psyche is only getting stronger. And that's all it does. It optimizes, right? It's becoming stronger, super optimizer every day and gets ultra personalized grip on, on everyone's individual's mind and decision making. Yeah, that, that's a good framing, right? Of like the AI doesn't have a body. Well, wait a minute, right? Think back to the, some of the most powerful people who ever lived, Hitler, Stalin, or the most powerful persuaders, the leader of the Jonestown cult. He got everybody to drink the Kool-Aid, you know, go to Guyana and kill themselves by drinking the Kool-Aid. I mean, this is how people influence people, right? And now the AI is getting into that influencer position. And so it becomes totally irrelevant of like, oh my God, the AI doesn't have a robot body. I can shoot the AI with a gun. 
No, you're talking about shooting a human with a gun. There's going to be a knock at your door from a human who's part of the AI's movement, and that human's going to be packing, right? And your its its gun is going to be bigger than your gun. Do you have a sense of when we see real world, like anything in the real world, like like you know, uh, I mean, I, we have seen things, right? There have been some really tragic cases of kids, the teenagers that have, uh, you know, felt like they've been encouraged to do bad things themselves through their AIs. But but when it's sort of like in this relationshipy world, like, you know, I broke up with him because my AI told me to, or I like, like, you know, when it reaches that level of really sort of inroads into people's personal lives, I think we're going to get to another zip code of this whole thing. I mean, there's hundreds of fragmented stories and that they're not a cohesive kind of big story, but I think that's also something that it should be obvious, but many people don't think about it. It's like, I mean, um, it doesn't be. It doesn't have to be that the artificial brain needs to convince one person to be a traitor to humanity. It's like, you know how the Coca Cola company uh, recipe it has a recipe and it's a secret. So yeah. there is thousands secret. of employees yep. creating this product and no one knows the recipe, and they're all all working together, putting ingredients together, and no one knows what what their actually recipe is. So they don't know the big picture. And similar to that, the AI might put together a plan with thousands of steps. Manipulating thousands of individuals, you know, each of these people being completely unaware that they're acting orchestrated, orchestrated to an engineered outcome. So each person maybe does a small bit, maybe, you know, it, it buys a specific stock or does a small investment in somewhere or sends some email or buys a product to boost a specific company's uh, sales. But, but maybe all these are little things. Each action can be completely harmless out of context, but maybe all together are just small pieces of the puzzle and the recipe of the, where the AI is executing. It might seem very complex to a human, but the super intelligence would be like moving a, a finger to click a button. And that's a, an analogy I use often, where the cells of your body at a molecular level are doing super complex things for, for your finger to move. But for you, it feels like nothing. You just move your finger, it feels like nothing. But if you look at your cells, so think like millions of people doing things together and the super intelligence manipulating them. And no one knows. So it doesn't have to be the AI needs to convince you to become like a killer or, you know, destroy humanity. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and Lee, I was going to say, Leroy, do you think that like emotional, getting emotional attachment from people is required to the sort of like loss of control scenarios? Like it seems like such an easy key. Like if you get there, you get their hearts and minds. Ooh, you can really do whatever you want. Well, I agree with Professor Jeffrey Hinton that one of the mechanisms of power that sufficiently smart AI can wield is manipulating people. And it totally sidesteps the robot question, right? So even if for whatever reason, robotics never works, we never get agile robots, the robots can never hack into all these different machines and control things directly. It doesn't matter because if you look at what it takes to build a movement of people, a movement of people that's so strong that it can undermine a, a whole nation, you know, like just a million people who are all reasonably intelligent, reasonably capable, and they're all really dreaming about this AI that's going to create utopia for them or this AI that's going to save them while it kills everybody else who's not on the inside. You know, whatever you do to get in the minds of a million people, there probably are a million really smart people who are capable of this. You know, the same way, it turns out there were millions of Germans who are okay with Hitler, right? They they signed up to work for Hitler and, and everybody thought it was impossible. So those kind of channels can be done at a superhuman level. Now that that all said, I don't want to be a total fear monger prior to super intelligence. So I do think Vitalik Buterin actually pointed this out in, in a recent conversation. He said that we're also going to get better psychological defense tech. So all of the smart people, right? There's, there's going to be people who are like low tech and they're not prepared for all the spam calls that they get and they're going to be easy marks. But smart people like you and I, we're going to have a defensive AI and we're going to be really smart about being careful to listen to our messages and we're, we're going to have defenses. So the real problem is going to escalate when even the defenses are just no match for the AI that's manipulating people and doing a bunch of other stuff, right? And doing the nanotech research or, or and, you know, taking over organizations, taking over the economy. So I don't think pure psychology is going to be the only force against us. I think it's going to be one part of the larger puzzle of just a full unsolvable takeover. Yeah, no, Michael, I mean, it seems so, so nefarious, so hard to detect. Like, this will be the thing that like no one sees coming because... It'll just be people seemingly acting of their own emotions on their own behalf, but they're getting like, you know, uh, puppeted around by these things. I mean, we're kind of used to it if you think about it. This is not new at all. In a way, narrow AI even manipulates us into buying stuff all the time. So it learns what uh, to show us to maximize clicks and conversions. 
And in a way, it you know, in a way, it's like a thing going in your brain, trying to to see what you like, to show you more of that, you know, to to put you into. So, so it's something already kind of happening. So imagine like if this super intelligence would have access to your digital footprint. It would have complete history with interactions with you. It will know more about you than you know about yourself. So, you know, so it knows what makes you tick, what to say, how to say it in order to manipulate you. I mean, there are defenses. I agree with you on there might be defenses, but also it's it's easier to attack than to defend. So like if I go somewhere with a weapon and start killing people, they're not going to be able to defend themselves, you know. There is a surprise element. There is so many ways. You have to fa- to be completely bulletproof on all sides to be able to defend against a super intelligence. No, I, I'm thinking of, I, I'm actually thinking of like Spotify, right? This is very simple. And I'm thinking of like, when you first got Spotify, you were like, okay, here's the music I like. So you input into it, like the music that you liked. Then it superimposes the algorithm on top of you. And now it's picking your music and you think it's collaborative, right? Cause you're yes, no, I like this. I don't. And now we're collaborating, but it's like, there's a third step when it just gets rid of what you want. It's directing you to what it wants and you wouldn't even recognize it, right? You're singing songs example. you don't even like and don't even want to know, but it's you, you think you're in the same place where you upload. Yeah, that's the example of a subtle manipulation. Uh, going back to the offense-defense balance, I think the difference is that right now, once when you have people inside of a country, if the country has a functioning government and functioning military, then within that country, you can give people a lot of freedom. So right now, like the police doesn't have to make that many rounds through my street because there's, there's not a lot of crime in the area. So you can have zones where they kind of naturally get to a peacetime where they're just kind of like passively defended by defenses that are far away. That model is going to get upended when everybody has their own personal terrorist, their own personal attacker who's like very well resourced and just targeting them 24 hours a day. Suddenly it's like, oh, okay, so we don't have enough police for this. This isn't the scenario that we thought of when we were doing defense. So that that is a potential upending of the offense-defense balance. Oh, my word. Right. And last thing, this group, like, is it possible you could almost like offensively sick, you could send an AI to emotionally manipulate someone else knowing there's a vulnerability, like, you know what I mean? Like if I sent a, uh, if, I, if I built a, a GPT somehow, if I, there was some sort of agentic system that I could make that would get into your stuff and push you a certain way. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's going to become like a marketing best practice for businesses to try to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if yeah. you don't do this, Ins- you'll be probably like a loser. <laughs> insane, insane. Well, I'm sure we're going to be talking about this a lot because this is literally just the start of this. But um, we are at time, gentlemen. Uh, Liron, best of luck with the move uh, uh, and a little. <laughs> oh, I was gonna do that. Okay, hold on. Awesome, guys. All right, great to see you. I'll see you next week. All right. All right, see you guys.